Here's another best game prize from the ACO 50 plus seniors tournament played in Crete in October. This game was selected by uh, my grandmaster colleague Sigurd Lanka, and it is a wild ride. It's such an interesting game. So we have Ognian Stoichev against Spiridon Ilanzis, and this is the kind of game where, in fact, both players deserve the prize because both players were really going for it in this game. By the way, if you're interested in playing one of these uh, amateur chess organization tournaments, the next events are in May, do check out the ACO website. And if you book before the end of November, then you get an early bird discount. And I cannot recommend these tournaments highly enough. Really very relaxed atmosphere, very well organized. Great hotel, great food, there's a beach, there's swimming pools. I'll be there. <laughs> I really like the tournaments. I'm there giving talks and giving analysis. Just book it, it's great. Now, let's crack on with the game. Um, so, Stoichev playing white, Ilanzis playing black, and a normal d4 opening, and Ilanzis goes for c5, inviting white into a Bononi. You don't have to go into it. Of course, white can just play e3 here. But white is up for a challenge and plays d5. So we have a normal Bononi position. So we have this typical Bononi structure, e4 and d5 against d6 and c5. And this bishop is going to come to the long diagonal. I mean, it's such a sharp position. There's potential play against the e-pawn. Black tries to get this going. Well, there's all kinds of things going on here. I always thought the best way to play for black is to get in an early bishop g4 here. But uh, Spiridon Ilanzis plays in a different way. Rook e8, attacking the e-pawn. Knight d2. So uh, this is... A very controversial variation. I think, you know, theoretically it's probably good for white, but it's very hard to handle. You might recall the uh, famous game between Spassky and Fischer played in the 1972 World Championship match that went Queen C2 and Fischer uncorked this extraordinary move Knight H5, allowing the pawns to be doubled. Um, but Fischer built up very well and actually won a beautiful game. Just bear that in mind when we see the next few moves. h3 from white, that can be an important move, taking away the g4 square. If black intends playing knight e5, you can actually throw in f4 and, and the knight can't go to g4. a6, threatening to advance, so therefore a4. Rook b8, so this might come in at some stage anyway. So that's a dangerous advance. Queen c2. So very similar to the Fischer, the, or the Spassky Fischer game, I should say. So white now has three pieces protecting the e-pawn. And Ilanzis plays in the same way as Fischer with knight h5. So it's a slightly different position. White's pawn is on h3, which can be a target later on. But there are, there are other differences as well, but it's, it's tricky. And uh, Onyan uh, decides to accept the challenge and take that knight. And then plays knight c4, which is I think, a good idea. So this bishop can potentially get in the game. Knight e5. In this position, I, uh, I'm i not sure about white's next move. I, I mean, knight takes is okay. But knight e3 feels like the right move to cover the f5 square. But it's a really sharp position, and I can understand why... Um, 
Ognian didn't wish to do this because the queen comes out. You know, it starts to get very tricky, but I, I still think this is the correct move. So knight takes knight, bishop takes knight, and that kind of clears the situation for black. Bishop looks pretty good. It might end up on d4. And black just needs a couple of moves here. You know, something like this, and king h8, rook g8, and there's a huge attack on the king side. Knight e2 played. And one of the ideas of this is that, well, the knight swings around, it covers d4, covers f4, covers g3. And having moved away from c3, covering d4, one idea is to play f4 and then f5 which blocks out that bishop on c8. And I think black's next move is excellent because, you know, there is a danger that black could be squashed here with that move. f5. So obviously that physically stops white from playing f4, f5 and starts to break up the center as well. f4 played. And th this is... An interesting moment. Um, Irlandis plays the bishop back to h8. I mean, I think it probably would have been better just to go to g7, but anyway, the bishop has to retreat. And I really like the way that white plays this now. Got to do something about the pawn on e4. So if e takes f5, queen f6, I think, is a good move. And those bishops look fantastic screaming across the board there are weaknesses on the e-file as well um but that's why i really like this move e5 and this just leaves the position completely unclear of course this has to be taken and again this has to be taken or one of these pawns has to be taken anyway queen takes d5 And you can see that in in taking that pawn, black has not been able to bring this bishop on c8 into the game. As white has bypassed that pawn on f5, that blocks the bishop, and that's a problem. In this position, white played knight f4, but I really like rook a3, looking to swing across the board uh, maybe to d3, maybe to g3, maybe to f3. And that's quite a dangerous situation for black, considering that you know, black's development could be better. But knight f5 played. Oh, excuse me, knight f4 played. Also very interesting, actually. And bishop takes, because black still has to develop on the queen side. And again, I think rook a3 is an interesting move. But queen e2 played. So this is just looking to switch the queen over to this side of the board. And this is a nice way of playing now. King h8, queen h5, and rook g8. So black reminds white that actually, well, there could be a counterattack here. Rook a3, that rook finally comes up. Here it's probably best to play b5 to try and get that bishop to the long diagonal as quickly as possible. But c4 was played. And there's a remarkable move that white has here. Uh, a very unusual move that actually gives white a very good position. Rook e3 was played. In fact, queen e2 is the computer recommendation. I mean, this is very, very surprising. So why this move? Well, it keeps tabs on that bishop, so it means that rook d1, rook d1, yeah, rook d1 is is a threat, um, and that bishop is in trouble. And the problem is, if the bishop retreats, then it gets hounded by that knight. And once the bishop goes, then a move like bishop d2 coming to the long diagonal is very unpleasant. So, yeah, it's a, it's a curious move, but it actually puts black under massive pressure. But very difficult to see that kind of retreat. Rook e3 played instead. Also, 
targeting that bishop. Bishop d7, good move. The bishop comes to the long diagonal. We can see, well, what White's idea was with this rook transfer. Basically, White decided just to get rid of that dark square bishop and now looks to get the bishop on the long diagonal. But it's impossible to do that. If bishop d2, threatening bishop c3, then just queen, queen takes b2. And, yeah, black is doing fine. It's not possible to bring the bishop to the long diagonal. So, queen d1 played, hitting the bishop, and bishop c6. So, it's, in fact, it's black that's managed to get the bishop to the long diagonal first. And that's crucial. At the moment, that's defended by the knight. <clears throat> but it won't take too long before black can build up here and that's obviously a really weak point queen c2 that defends the b pawn so that now bishop d2 to c3 becomes a threat bishop b4 queen f2 and rook d8 well in fact it's extremely difficult for white to bring the bishop here um, that's that's crucial Rook g1, rook g7, bishop b3, rook g d7 with the threat to rook d1. So if black can exchange off rooks, then that's a big achievement that brings black closer to the win, definitely. Wasn't the only way of playing, um, but very straightforward. Bishop b6, rook c8. Doesn't change things actually. Queen h4 threatens knight g6. So the king steps to the side. Very important. It's on a, on a light square. You want to get away from that bishop. Knight h5 threatening a check. Rook c6 guards the f6 square, hits the bishop. Okay, reinstates the threat of knight f6. Rook d6, too many pieces covering f6. So black is still safe here. And actually, white's attack isn't really going anywhere. Bishop g5, threatening here. So queen d4. Bishop f4, rook g6. Ah, back to the g-file. Yes, that's a good idea. Queen e7, rook ce6. Hitting the queen and preventing queen e8 as well. That was rather important. So yeah, these squares are covered by the, by the major pieces. If queen c7, then black really does break through here. Check. And that will lead to mate. Um, just coming back here. So that's why queen b4 was played. So if white tries this, well, white did try that. <laughs> um, bishop g2. So white is trying to cover e1, but actually... Black is still winning. You, you don't have rook e1 because of queen covers, but actually queen d1 is winning. And this is the game continuation. And black played it very calmly and simply picked up the loose knight. So now it's queen and rook against queen and bishop. White's king is very exposed. Black's king is covered. So this is actually winning easily. Queen takes b7 and queen e2 check was the final move as white is getting mated after, well, let's have a look. King g3 check. Rook g4 check. A little bit of flashiness at the end. And queen g4. Such a complicated game. Um, as I said, I think both sides deserve a lot of credit. They were both really going for it. First with... Knight h5, very double-edged move that can leave black with terrible weaknesses, but um, I think f5 was a good move, hitting out. And actually, I really like the way that white tried to seize the initiative here. I think f5 is a really, e5 is a really good idea because it leaves the f5 pawn blocking the bishop. And this is actually a really unclear position. And yeah, on another day, white might have won this. But 
well, credit to uh, Ilanzis, Spiridon Ilanzis, who won. Uh, I think, you know, there were some excellent moves in there. I think bringing the bishop to the long diagonal was obviously crucial. And then he crashed through at the end with bishop takes g2, and that was a winning sacrifice. So well played to uh, Spiridon Ilanzis. I'm going to show you one more game from uh, the this ACO tournament. As I said, I highly recommend these tournaments. But before the end of November, and you get the early bird discount on the tournament in Kos in May. Thanks for watching.